Greetings! It is I, Tantus Narvan Jacobin, Lord Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue our discussion on Shadowrun. Now we're talking about the 4th edition, as I've said before. I will probably have some videos at the end talking about the differences between 4th and 5th edition. They're surprisingly few. They're very close together. But anyway, um, so we were talking about combat. And I've been going in through ranged combat. Today I'm going to get into talking about melee combat, and then some other kind of combat modifiers that I'm talking about. And I'm going to start with those. I'll continue them in the next episode. Well, let's dive into melee combat. So with melee combat, there's a reason it's a complex action instead of a simple one, because it's not just one hit. It's a series of, you know, ducks, blows, parries, you know, back and forth, so that, like, you know, I'm not just punching a guy once. I may be, like, punching, dipping, diving, ducking, trying to get that good hit in to do damage. It's more than one maneuver set together in this complex action, which results in either a hit or a miss. Anyway, so um, there are a bunch of modifiers that the book lists to melee. Um, some examples of them would be things like you're fighting multiple opponents at once, you have a weapon, or, or you yourself have reach if you're a troll, or maybe you have a superior position to your opponent that's giving you a bonus. Anyway, so once you've done your attack, well, your melee-based attack, your opponent can defend in a couple of different ways. Uh, that when you're using defense against melee, you can, of course, parry it, you can, of course, block it, or you can dodge it. All of these use a different skill. You're going to use your reaction plus a di one of those three skills that lists in the book. Uh, it's going to use your melee for parrying, your unarmed for blocking, and your dodging for, of course, dodging. Now, you could always take a total defense in which you can add your dodge dice again. So if you're choosing to take a total defense and you really wanted to, you could go reaction, dodge, and undodge, adding your dodge twice. Of course, you can use your total defense with any of these other maneuvers, and that's what you're defending with and melee. Now, the base damage for all melee combat is going to be based upon your strength. It's going to be your strength divided by two, rounded up. So if I have a strength of five, rounds up to three when I divide it by two. While other hand, if I have a strength of four, I don't have to round it at all, it's going to be two. So you always round up when talking about strength damage. It is modified by whatever weapon you're using then. If it's something like more your unarmed fist, normally isn't it modified? Why well, if I'm using an axe? Why well, if an axe? I'm gonna, it's going to tell you what kind of modifiers you have to this damage. Now, melee attacks are resisted by impact armor. So that's the type of armor that you're, you're going to be resisting it against it. But let's talk about armor. That's when we're going to move into some other combat rules. Let's begin the discussion on armor. There are, in fact, two types of armor uh, that the same, type of, same set of armor you're wearing would give these two values. So basically there's two values to anything of armor that you have. Some of them have both, some of them have just one. It's going to be entirely up to that armor. So there's ballistic and impact. Ballistic is for more things like bullets, bolts, arrows. It's more sudden, you know, point of impact sort of armor. While on the other hand, impact is for things like punches, kicks, melee attacks, explosions. More broad-based hits when you're getting hit by it. Now, when you're looking in the book, and if it's talking about armor, it will have a little kind of, in, in parentheses, it's going to have one number slash a second number. The first one's going to be ballistic, the second one's going to be impact. And that's how it's going to be listed, you know. It's basically going to be B slash I, when they're listing the two types of armor, very simply. Now, you can wear multiple armors at the same time. The only thing is, only the highest value for anything applies. That means whatever armor gives me the highest ballistic, that ballistic applies. While whatever armor gives me the highest impact, that armor applies. Now, there are disadvantages to wearing too many armors. Now, there are other things that can modify your armor, like helmets and shields give you bonuses to these. And so that wouldn't be counting as multiple armors, would be counting on modifiers to your armor. Now, there is a disadvantage as to using too much armor. You can encumber yourself. Should and your armor value equal double your body, should it exceed twice your body, you are encumbered and you get a minus one to agility and reaction. And that minus one is for every two points that that armor value is above twice your body, you get a cumulative minus one to agility and reaction. So it can get higher and higher. And the thing is, unlike with when we're defending, we only use the best values when figuring out how much armor I have, I add together all of it. Now this is now this is individually. That means if my ballistic or impact individually compares this way. That means I'm not adding the two of those together to figure this out. I'm looking at them individually. But let's say I've got two sets of armor. I would add the ballistics for both those sets of armor. 
and the impact for both those sets of armor before comparing it to my body to see if I'm encumbered. So there is still a disadvantage for wearing a whole lot of armor and you don't get a huge advantage for it. You have to be set up with enough you know, physical mass in order to use this properly. So next up I want to talk about called shots. Now called shots means I'm just basically, I'm aiming for some place on my opponent to target a weak point on them. I'm basically calling out a weak point. Now there are only certain types of weapons I can call a shot with. It's normally pistols, things that have single shot, semi-auto, or burst fire capabilities. Then I'm targeting it. So it's going to be really ranged I'm called shotting with. And when I call a shot, it's only a free action to do this. So it, it, it takes up my free action effectively on the turn, but I can be like, I'm calling a shot. Now for a called shot, there are a couple of different uses for it. The first one is of course calling a shot to avoid armor. So I'm choosing to uh, aim at a place on that target's body that has no armor. When I do this, I apply a penalty to my dice pool equivalent to the armor I'm ignoring. So effectively, since I'm normally, let's say I'm using a pistol, it's going to be ballistic armor, I'm going to take my opponent's ballistic armor and apply it as a penalty to my dice pool before firing and seeing if I hit them. Now if I hit them, they only roll their body to resist damage. They don't roll their armor because I've basically shot around it. Now another way you can do this is you can add damage value with your called shot. You can target a more vital location. I can choose to add 1 to 4 to my damage value, my DV, but I take that same penalty to my dice roll. So if I choose, to, I want to do plus 4 DV, I'm like aiming at that guy's, let's say, eye, for example. I'm not, you know, it's, I'm just choosing to do plus 4 DV whether I hit him there or not. It doesn't really make a difference, but I'm aiming at that. I then take a minus four penalty to my dice pool when freaking if I'm rolling to figure out if I hit him. And the last way I can do a called shot is I can call a shot to knock something out of someone's hand. To do this, I take a minus four to my dice pool penalty and I fire. And should my damage value exceed the target's strength, and this is the damage value after armor and everything is taken care of, it's the, mod it's the one that there's finally being dealt to that person then they drop that item. If it is not exceeding their strength, then they keep hold of that item. And the last thing I do want to briefly mention is there are defensive modifiers. Um, like ranged attacks and melee attacks, there's modifiers. That, there are modifiers to defensive things. Like if I'm running and trying to defend, or if I'm injured and trying to defend, I get modifiers to my defense roles. So that's it for this episode. I've gone over, of course, melee attacks and gone over some other rules involved in combat that are actually very important to me. There are a few more special things included in combat I do want to go over, but I'll go over them in the next episode. So until then, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything I thought there, think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like this video. It shows your support for the channel and the Empire and the work I do. Please subscribe if you already haven't. We're always looking for more members, more citizens of the Empire. And please share this video. If you know anybody who would learn anything further or would just enjoy watching it, please share it with them. And until the next time, I bid you farewell.